When you first start My Summer Car, all of the engine pieces in the garage can be very daunting. But realistically, it's just a giant puzzle waiting to be put together. This tutorial is going to very easily teach you how to put the engine together, and a written list of steps will be featured in the description down below. Before you start putting the engine together, you will need to buy a few parts from Tamo's store. Tamo's store can be found here in the town. For the engine, you're going to want to buy some spark plugs, an alternator belt, some oil, and a new oil filter. The one in the garage is trash. If you want to buy everything for the car build in one go, you may also want to buy three clutch fluid bottles, two light bulbs, and fill up your gasoline tank. But these are not needed for the engine, they're for the rest of the car. You may also want to buy a battery. If you don't put the battery found in the garage on charge right away, it will already be dead. Take your newly bought goodies back home and get ready to build the engine. Many people like to use the engine hoist, but today we're not going to use that because you don't have to. You may also want to position your wrench set on the floor for easy access whilst building the engine. First, you're gonna grab the engine block by left clicking on the item and spin it upside down using the scroll wheel. You're then going to grab the camshaft and attach it to the left side of the block, securing it with two five millimeter bolts. Then grab the camshaft wheel and place it again on the left side, connecting it to the camshaft. We do not need to tighten this up yet. Next, grab the crankshaft and place it on top, followed by three main bearings, one, two, and three, which can be secured with the nine millimeter wrench and six different bolts. At this point, you can also add the engine plate to the left side. After placing the engine plate, grab the flywheel, place it over the engine plate and tighten all six seven millimeter bolts. You may also now want to put the clutch together by assembling these three parts. The clutch pressure plate clips to the clutch cover plate and the clutch disc then attaches to the latter two pieces. Set this aside because we will clip it on the engine later. Flip the engine block back over and place the head gasket on top. Our four pistons are the next to go through the holes at the top. Once they are in, flip the engine block back over and secure the eight different seven millimeter bolts. The three big bulky parts come next. First, the oil pan. This can now be secured by placing it on top of your upside down block and secured with eight seven millimeter bolts. You can also tighten the 13 millimeter bolt on the bottom of the oil pan. This will stop the oil from falling out later. We're then going to grab the gearbox and place it again on the upside down block over the top of the oil pan. The gearbox has one 10 millimeter bolt to do up next to this big hole looking thing and six seven millimeter bolts to the side. We only need to do the bottom two seven millimeter bolts for now. The rest will be done later when we put the cover on. Tightening those last bolts, you may notice something missing. We can now place the clutch onto the engine in that space on top of the flywheel. There are six different six millimeter bolts to tighten here. Tighten the first visible three, go back into hand mode and spin the wheel using your scroll wheel. Then go back to tool mode and finish tightening the last three bolts. The inspection cover may now be placed on top of the gearbox to cover up the clutch and the remaining four seven millimeter bolts can be tightened. The drive gear can also be placed near the inspection cover on top of the hole in the middle. It has seven six millimeter bolts to tighten, six around the middle and one on the end of the arm. The last big bulky part to attach is the cylinder head. Place this on top of where the pistons are and secure with eight seven millimeter bolts. On top of the cylinder head goes the rocker shaft. This is secured with five eight millimeter bolts and must be tuned. To tune the rocker shaft easily, Grab your screwdriver and scroll downwards on all of the screws until they stop moving. Then go back over each screw and scroll up seven turns. This will tune the rocker shaft perfectly. You can then place the rocker shaft cover on top of the rocker shaft and tighten with six different seven millimeter bolts. Next, we're gonna add the spark plugs. Take them out of the box by holding the box and pressing F Then insert them into the four holes under the rocker shaft. You tighten the spark plugs with a special spark plug wrench. Whilst we're looking at this side of the engine, we're also going to add the fuel pump, which clips to this weird looking hole here and is secured with two seven millimeter bolts. And then we're also going to add the distributor to this weird looking hole here. The distributor must be tuned. Later, it can be tuned more effectively by turning it while the engine is on until you no longer hear a chirping sound. But for now, we're gonna eyeball the tuning. Turn your engine so you're facing the right side of it. Typically, you want to line it up so the bolt is slightly to the right. You move this using the scroll wheel and then you can tighten the bolt with the screwdriver. The next step is to to tighten and tune the crankshaft. So grab the 10 millimeter wrench. This is super easy. Turn the 10 millimeter bolt until this line on the crankshaft aligns with this line here. Sometimes it is hard to tell if it is lined up properly, so make sure you check from different angles. You can then add the timing chain on top, then add the timing cover. This can be secured with six different six millimeter bolts. The water pump then clips into this space here and is tightened with five seven millimeter bolts. The water pump pulley is placed over the water pump and tightened with four seven millimeter bolts. 
and then the crankshaft pulley is placed on this hole lower down and tightened with one singular 11 millimeter bolt. Whew. Next, the alternator place is slightly to the right of the parts you just placed and is tightened with two different bolts, one seven millimeter bolt at the top of the arm and one 10 millimeter bolt on the back of the alternator. Hover over the alternator and scroll up on your scroll wheel. You can now attach the alternator belt that you bought from the store. To tighten it perfectly, scroll down all the way back to the right and then scroll up two ticks. This will stop the belt from being too tight and breaking. We're almost finished. Turn the engine so the front is facing you again to attach the starter. It attaches to this hole on the bottom left. For now, you only need to tighten the back 7mm bolt on it. The front bolt can be tightened once you've wired the car. Turn the engine so the back is facing you now. We're going to add the headers here, which can be tightened with five 8mm screws. And then the carburetor, which can be attached with four 8mm screws. The carburetor must be tuned with a screwdriver, and the screw can be located on the back. To get a perfectly reasonable starter tuning, scroll up for 44 ticks and then scroll down seven. The air filter can now be added to the top of the engine and secured with two 6mm bolts. Lastly, the oil filter and the oil can be added. The oil filter attaches to the stick on the front of the engine, scroll your scroll wheel upwards to tighten the filter, and then add the oil to the engine by screwing open the lid on top of the rocker cover and holding the oil bottle over the top. You're done. You can now pick up the whole engine like a good strong finish boy you are, line it up with the engine bay and attach it to the subframe using three 11 millimeter bolts. Or you can throw the engine where it belongs. Maybe too.